What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Real Stories of Success podcast. I'm Ryan Herget sitting here over Zoom one more week with my good buddy, Austin Lahr. Austin, what is the good word today as we are still navigating through the corona stuff, man? Yeah, I hope everybody out there is uh, is taking this whole thing in strides, but uh, but uh, I'm sure we're ready off for a vacation and, and get out of our house a little bit. So No uh, doubt, no doubt. Yep, yep, yep. What's, what's new in your world, Ryan? Well, I'll tell you what, man, things have definitely not stopped in the real estate world, but things are, uh, you know, definitely we've pumped the brakes a little bit. You know, we were talking to some uh, guests earlier that, uh, you know, showing numbers have, uh, you know, slowed down a little bit. New listings coming on the, on the market have slowed down a little bit, but uh, this is something I'm super excited to talk to our guests today about. Uh, Michael Bounds is is a gentleman that I know uh, very similar to you and I, Austin, that just knows no stop, that he does a ton of work. And when I called him yesterday about being on the podcast, this man was knocking out phone calls, talking to people about solving problems so super excited to bring mr michael bounds on so uh yeah uh, tell us a little bit about michael and uh what we're uh, working on today here yeah you said it man the the guy's work ethic is amazing so uh we got michael here uh been in the business since 2002 he's going to tell us about his builder background a lot of us have had that right actually all three of us on this call have that builder background Mm -hmm. um him and his team did 15 million uh 2019 indiana born and raised and and we'll probably even get into maybe his blended family so they got eight kids uh between him and his wife so um we've got we've got one of his assistants uh one of his uh realtor assistants on right now so michael thanks for thanks for coming on man Hey, no problem, man. Thank you guys for inviting me and for, for thinking about me. Yeah. Now, Michael, you've got such a cool, cool story. And, uh, you know, you you started, let's kind of, you know, circle back to the very beginning of this. I mean, you've got so much cool work going on right now. You took a step uh, last year and, you know, moved your entire real estate business, invested in yourself. And so I definitely am anxious to dive into uh, Thrive Real Estate and hear everything that you and your wife are working about with that. But let's uh, hit the rewind button real quick and kind of go right. back to that 2002 range when you were just getting started in the, in, into this business. Kind of walk us through that. You know, what were some of those early lessons that you learned throughout your real estate career? Because I know you've done a lot and uh, you've helped a lot of people throughout that time. So, uh, t- It's funny, 2002, I was absolutely terrible. I sold uh, one house my, the very first year uh, and it was a friend of mine, my best friend, his, his grandmother had passed away. So it was an $18,000 house. It was a listing and uh, that was my only sell for the entire year. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, humble, humble beginnings. I actually got out of the business, um, never thinking that I would ever uh, kind of get back into it. So. So what was it the change that kind of brought you back in? Because I know that you uh, really launched down a path of, of, you know, helping a lot of people with brand new homes as your career was really, really starting to take off. And uh, so kind of tell us about that. What was that like? Because I know you kind of came from a little bit different or not different, but just kind of specialized model of real estate in the past, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I have a new home, uh, new home background, uh, actually in the middle of building my home. Uh, uh, the sales counselor said, you'd be really good at doing this. So in the process, um, I actually started new, becoming a new home counselor. In doing that, it allowed me um, to kind of develop my skills, the technique um, that I never really had before. When you're, in, when you're an agent, you're just kind of out there. But when you, kinda, when you start from that beginning, um, you're able to kind of learn the, the, uh, the art and the technique. So that's kind of where it began. I got pretty good at selling new homes and I applied that model to general real estate. So that's kind so, of how I got here. Going back to those early days, who were some of the, who were some of the mentors maybe that, that our audience has heard of that, that you had in your early day career and maybe even, you know, now who, who are you looking to um, that shaped, shaped what you do? Um, well, Tony Rogers, um, rest in heaven. He's an early mentor. Um, back in the day when I was doing new, const- new construction, um, um, he was really pivotal um, and giving me, you know, giving me my shot and uh, telling me, you know, you know, different things. There's so, I mean, there's so many people I could, I could uh, name. Um, Kyle Gillette. I know Kyle Gillette. I love that dude. He saved me from banking because <laughs> I got into banking thinking that's what I wanted to do when we we had a recession 
and he pulled me out. He was the VP or he was the president at Syntex at the time. And I had totally gave up and I never really told him that. Like he really was a, a inspiration from that perspective. So I could go on and on. So I'll take your whole 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about, you know, cause you know, we all kind of came from that new home builder background. And I think one of the things that you touched on there is, 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 is something that gets overlooked in a lot of just general real estate training. And that is the, you know, fundamental skills you learn sitting in a model home, you know, cause yeah. I can remember many sales, you know, you know, really strong sales trainers coming into the model to teach some of those skills. What were maybe some of those skills that, that, that you learned sitting in a model home and selling new homes that maybe correlated over once you got into the general real estate side of things, Michael? Uh, asking questions, the asking deeper questions. So um, they don't teach you that as a real estate agent asking good mm -hmm. questions, and then um, not only overcoming a, a you know objections, like not creating the objection. So I'm literally um, a facilitator. I look at myself as a facilitator. I'm presenting a menu, and then I let my client you know pick. I'm a consultant. So a lot of real estate agents don't, they, they don't really take that perspective. Uh, but anyway, I can, I can go on about that too. But yeah, it's, um, it's allowed me to, 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 um, to help more people and then to not, you know, a lot, I, I know on the other side, when I was working with agents, um, with other agents, oh, sweetie, sorry. Um, they would create their own objections. They would not help their clients. So I just want to make sure that I'm doing a really good job, uh, you know, serving their needs and getting, you know, helping them. So, so what made you transition, right? So walk us through that, walk the audience through that. What made you transition over to, to being a, a realtor and, and, uh, and what did you take from the builder world? Maybe it's the not creating your own objections. What, what'd you take from that builder world that helps you? Um, I actually, what, kind of gave me the, 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 the idea I was working with my wife uh, at the time she worked for Beezer and I worked for Pulte and um, the idea of being able to help clients and then, you know, help her, you know, help her, that was, uh, you know, good. And I would be able to actually work with her. She's really good. She was really, she's really good at that. So um, that's what gave me the start. And then I just, my wheels started turning, you know, the biggest difference on this side from being a realtor versus being a, you know, a sales counselor is the lead generation. When you're walking in a model, you have people walking in your door, so you don't have to be as good at lead generating. So if you can figure that out as a realtor, uh, you typically, that was a hard, that's the hardest transition. Let's kind of dive into that a little bit, Michael, because I know that that's something that you do at an incredibly high level. You know, you've invested countless hours of time learning how to do that and, you know, learning how to generate your own leads, because certainly that's a big, big challenge that a lot of real estate agents face or people in sales in general face is, is how do I find people to talk to about, you know, what it is that I do every day. And, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that do a lot with social media. There's, there's very traditional things like knocking on doors and making for sale by owner calls, but you found a little bit different path as far as how you learn to bring people to you that, uh, you know, are possibly interested in buying and selling real estate. Tell us about that a little bit, because you've taken taken a very different approach than a lot of people that we've had on the show in the past. And it's working really, really, really well for you. Well, um, what I what I do is not that different than where other people lead generate. So, for example, some people, well, I, I also buy leads as well, but some people buy leads. So what I do is I systematically follow up with my leads. So I, I market. I'm, I happen to be good with advertising on social media. And, and driving my business that way. But if you would be good at like, say open houses, the whole objective is to gather people's information, put them in your database and then follow up with them systematically. It looks like I'm doing this, you know, instantly, but I'm not. There's some people that I've worked for six months or some people I've worked with for two years or three years. So it just really kind of, you know, it just kind of depends. You just have to work a system. And I think that's so important because most people that, you know, work any form of lead or, you know, help, you know, heck, they, you know, even work open houses, they don't do something so pivotal that you just hit the nail on the head is it takes time and follow up. 
You know, yeah. very few people walk in or come in as an internet lead or click on a house and say, I want to buy that one or go into an open house and say, I want to buy this one. That does right. happen. Sure. But that's, I think, most real estate agents definition of a good lead, whereas you've got a very different approach. I mean, you're calling these people, you're, you know, you're following up with people. I mean, you just said it for six months, sometimes up to two years, sometimes. And when the average person starts their home search online 18 months in advance, I think is what statistics say. That's, you know, that's simply a lot of follow-up that you have to do. That's a lot of relationship building that you have to do. And it sounds like you've found some really good ways to do that. Let me ask you, do you, do you use or employ, you know, any automation in that? Or is this all systems that you've built out that you use to help follow up with those people once they come in? What's that look like in your mind, Michael? I do, I do both. So um, I, I do a lot of prospecting. So we have MailChimp that does, you know, f you know, uh, campaigns following up from that perspective. But all my leads come into us like a, to a CRM and they automatically get reached. And we're really aggressive on following up with them uh, on a regular basis. Um, so um, that's how we're able to, to follow up with them. What most people do is they'll get a, especially like an internet lead, they'll call them once or twice where we're re aggressively following up with them. Um, just to kind of make sure um, that they that they convert. What I want to do is the objective of my phone call. I try to change my mindset. So the objective of the phone call isn't to sell a house; mm -hmm. it's to convert the lead. Do you want to buy a house? Yes or no. If you don't want to buy a house, do you mind if I follow up with you from time to time, just in case? And then my job is to follow up with them in the event that they're ready to buy a home. Now they, you know, I happen to call them you know, or text them or shoot them an email. So that's it. That's the secret. Now you're simply staying top of mind and you're finding different ways to do that. It sounds like, and, yep. uh, and it's working, and social it's working media. at a high level. Yeah. I love that. And social media. So social media is that extra little ingredient because guess what? Every day someone's on, like they look on face on Facebook or on Instagram and guess who they see. Right. 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 So I it's like say, an email drip, but 360, I don't even get on Facebook. That's what's crazy. People are like, oh, you're on Facebook. Dude, I don't even get on Facebook, but they <laughs> see me. It's crazy. I know. But you're actually really, really good at that. You've got, uh, uh, man, this was years ago at this point, but you had posted a picture way before most other people I had seen post this, but the uh, the uh, the uh, cousin Eddie from uh, the vacation <laughs> movie, you posted a picture of that way back when. And so you're, you're always using social media, it seems like to differentiate yourself to keep yourself in front of your audience to maintain that top of mind but that's really interesting to hear that you know you're rarely if ever actually on there so yeah i i might get on there maybe once a day um and so i i don't get on a whole lot i normally i'll post something and i kind of drop a grenade and then go away and kind of read, <laughs> read the comments later but uh but yeah it's it, it's funny because um, at the last company I was with, we were doing similar uh, social media campaigns in Carolinas, and I had never been to this particular city. And I, law I come in and checked in the hotel, and the lady recognized. I had two people actually know who I was, uh, and I'd never stepped in that city before. So it just awesome. use like utilizing the power of social media. I used to have a separation of church and state. I could get on Facebook. And it was personal. I'd have a personal page in business and I didn't want to co-mingle. Now I want all my clients to friend me on Facebook because guess what happens if something happens in their life, they get married, someone dies. Guess what? I can now, I had one, I was talking to a lady. She had issues with sleeping. I give her insomnia. Hey, look, I got insomnia because I just don't <laughs> sleep, right? And I'm like giving her like, hey, this is what I do. To, you know, for sleeping, et cetera. How many real estate agents are giving their clients advice on insomnia? Right. So that's right. what social media does. It gives you that intimacy that you won't get it. You'll, you'll never get um, otherwise, you know? So anyway. So, so I kind of want to switch gears a little bit here, Michael. Another thing that, that I really admire about you and your business is, is your team building skills, right? So you've you've been able to take some things that you do and, and kind of replicate that into other people. Walk us through that. Why even build a team, number one? And, and what are things that you're looking for in those other people that you're bringing on to, to the Michael Bounce team? Why have a team? It's because I would love to have a day. I would, I would love to have a day off. Yeah. So um, 
having a team, it's again, another, it's a mindset shift. So um, it's hard because you want to resist. You want to think, okay, I'm the best at everything. When in all reality, there's some things that you're not really good at. So then you should delegate that and get that with somebody that is really good at it. So it's a way of transforming your business and making you even better. So the hard part is taking all that stuff that's in your head, that new, that spaghetti and dissecting it and then explaining to somebody that you're not really, that you're, that you're not particularly good at something and then explaining to them, Hey, you need to do this job. So I'm in that part of my trajectory is um, identifying talent. Um, everybody, you know, when you're, you're in, everybody says that they can do something but what I do is hard I'm I'm like a workaholic so like I feel like you know you need I need to you need to be working harder than me (laughs) you know what I'm saying so I'm really hard so you have to pick people um that you can influence I can say hey do this and then they do it um and talented people and um then you got to be clear with your message and communicating. This is what it, this is the systems and the models that I do. Um, and then just replicate it. So we're growing, we're trying, we're in, we're in the process. I love that. Um, Michael, one, you know, kind of closing thought here as we wrap up and we certainly appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your morning here to, you know, you know, just simply share your story because you've shared some really, really good insights as to how you run your business so far. So I hope everybody's taking notes, but one of the things that, you know, as as the world's evolving right now, as we kind of go through, uh, you know, what we're all experiencing here with the uh, staying at home and uh, locked up, obviously the real estate business is going to continue to evolve as well with that. But one thing that stood out to me yesterday when we were talking as well is, is you are always doing the work, you know, and by doing the work, it means talking to people, you know, doing the things that pay you money in this business, talking to people, listening homes, negotiating deals, et cetera. And you're always doing that work. How do you see that changing as, as we navigate through staying at home and the long-term impacts that are going to come from, you know, the, you know, the changes right now, what's that look like in your mind? How do you continue to lead? How do you continue to stay in front of things and uh, thrive through this versus, you know, where a lot of people are operating from a fear-based mindset right now. Yeah. So I want to be candid. Okay. You, if you have to mourn, if you, if you're, if you're, if you have to mourn, mourn it and get it out, get out of the way. You just, everybody's feeling stress. That's the thing. Most people aren't, won't bounce back. So I heard a story. I don't know if this is true or not, but Michael Jordan was playing a guy and got and Michael Jordan was tired and he was about to bend down and put his hands on his knees. And at that moment, when he was about to bend down and put his hands on his knees, the other guy bent down and put his hands on his knees. That signaled to Michael Jordan that dude was tired and he kicked his butt. Mm-hmm. So whenever I'm ready to give up, I'm looking for people putting their hands on their knees. Now's an opportunity. There's going to be a lot of people that a good market is the ultimate deodorant. So now is the time where you're just, whatever you're lead generating, doubling down. So one thing that I've noticed is I still have people that, you know, are I'm talking to regular, we're having good conversations. I'm just not having as many of them. So I can either say, hey, I'm going to make less money or B, I can ha- do more activities so that I can have more of those conversations. So right now I'm just doubling up my activities. Um, and, you know, I wrote a contract last night. You know, uh, we have to adapt. I've got, you know, a mask, yeah. I've got gloves. Um, we're kind of built for this. So we get a lot of our leads online, socially and, and Google. So um, the biggest part was then, you know, our buyers consultations are now on Zoom or on on the phone. So that's just you have to adapt, mourn, get it out, you know, get it out of your system. It took I had a day. I didn't want to get out of bed. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, you know what? Then you have to grind. You have to double. You have to work twice as hard. That's all this is. We have to work twice as hard. 
That's it. You know, that's, that's probably some of the best stuff that some of the best advice that we've heard on our podcast when dealing with COVID-19. So um, much appreciated, much appreciated. Michael, if, if our audience wants to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Do you, you prefer email your website, give them, we'll put it up on the screen, but, but what's the best way to actually get a hold of you? Yeah, you can email me or you can uh, give me, you can call me anytime. So I'm really, I'm excited. One years old, 30 minutes. She sat on my lap. She's just now getting <laughs> fidgety. So she did good. So, but yeah, contact me anytime you guys. All right. Well, Michael, we definitely appreciate it. So that's going to wrap up the latest edition of the Real Stories of Success podcast. So if you uh, took something away from this, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, reach out to Michael Bounds. He is a guy that uh, works tirelessly to provide value for his clients. And I know he'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have as well, as will Austin and I. So Austin, anything else for today, man? Or uh, I think we're ready to wrap uh, wrap up this one you guys all you guys all stay safe out there and uh reach out to either ryan or myself uh we'll put our contact information up and and we appreciate you guys and uh like subscribe and, and share please thanks so much we'll, we'll talk soon thank you guys